Ed, um, Cinda Kostayak and her uh, associates put together some very interesting questions for this interview. One had to do with uh, today's uh, role of public relations executive um, as opposed to the way it was when you were uh, reigning in your ro job at AT&T. Um, would you like to comment on that? What, you know, there's been a lot of changes. Uh, they, uh, so many have changed it to communications and the advisor role has diminished. Uh, what, what's your view on that? Well, well, I can give you impressions. I, uh, obviously, I'm retired, and uh, so uh, you, you perhaps can uh, take what I say as, <laughs> with a grain of salt, as we used to say. But uh, first of all, it, it, the field of, of corporate public relations, business public relations, is clearly far, far more complex today than it ever was before and continues to become more so. And uh, that's had one, on the one side, it's, I suppose it's good for jobs in the field and, and, uh, and, and the kinds of work that you have an opportunity to do that wasn't there before. Uh, but the dark side of that to me is that it's, it's distracting from what the core notions about public relations were in our day, so, and, and, and our predecessors, uh, because it was much more the counseling, uh, counseling function as really a continuing day-to-day, day-to-day uh, -day job. And now you have marketing communications and you have all kinds of communications. You, uh, you know, I'm waiting to see in the Wall Street Journal any day now, it's gonna say somebody has been has been elected vice president blogs, you know, <laughs> and uh, but you've got the whole internet stuff, the the, uh, uh, the skills necessary to keep a fresh website and our websites. Um, so it, it's it's really stretched, but uh, in the stretching, I think some of the the core uh, benefits, uh, values. Uh, uh, not, not as a moral thing, but values in terms of uh, the corporation getting what it's paying for uh, are lost uh, when the, the too many people in the public relations organization, including the chief, are spending too much time doing other things. Uh -huh. Now, another piece that I think has made the job more, more difficult is, of course, in many companies, it's the globalization. Right. Uh, when you're trying to be a counselor in a cross-cultural environment, it probably can't be done without without a lot of help or a lot of associate counselors. Uh, but in any case, and, and uh, in the customer base uh, tends to be different. Uh, uh, the CEO's travel schedule is uh, a double double the monster it was when you and I were there. So I, I think to, to sum up my impressions is yes, it's changed vastly, it's, it continues to change. Uh, I wanna see it come back uh, with a little more emphasis on the, on the counseling Counsel. function uh, without, uh, uh, you know, without uh, uh, necessarily giving up some of these other functions. I, I do think in some PR departments there, there are too many function, functions that really don't need to be there. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're there because it makes a great looking organization chart, you know, but, uh, but it's not uh, anybody else can do some of those things or, or they could be done somewhere else. Also, the decentralization has been another problem for, for the uh, CEO's advisor. Uh, by whatever title, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, if you have these very large, discrete, and rather independent business units, uh, and that really uh, are in business for themselves, mm -hmm. I mean, it's too much so. I, I always marveled at General Electric 
that how, how could they do such a good job, which they have mainly done through the years of, of, uh, of, of a coherent uh, face uh, to the public and, and a definable character. You know, when you're building jet engines, you're building, yeah. you're building refrigerators, right. light bulbs, <laughs> medical imaging, <Yeah. laughs> locomotives, you know, that's, that's quite a feat. You know, because those those businesses really don't, for the most part, have any overlap. I mean, they're different industries, you know. And yet, uh, the General Electric has has been able to be GE. So you have companies that have become infinitely more complex, and you have public relations vice presidents who have a lot of eggs in their basket some of which probably shouldn't be there because if you're going to sit on that basket and keep track of all that's going on, you don't really have time uh, to spend with the CEO in an advisory capacity. Yeah. And then you have the situation of uh, the CEO who might have been weaned away from the counseling and uh, uh, is either getting it Elsewhere, find someone else or not do. getting it, yeah. uh, the counseling that he should. Right, right. Uh, some of the m major headline stories that we've all suffered through in uh, recent years, um, you rarely find the public relations person having had a culpable role right. in those situations. Enron. Um, uh, did you find it that way too? Yes. That they weren't among the they weren't in the loop <laughs> indictees, <laughs> right. or they well, weren't they weren't they weren't indicted. Yeah. That's that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's a positive. <laughs> but um, uh, but they weren't in the loop. They <laughs> weren't in the loop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I, you know, I I just you know another thing in talking about this basket of eggs that, that a chief PR officer uh, has to has to deal with and and pulling. That person away from, from uh, the other job. The, the same executive that, that laid the one on me about uh, um, this this run like a mom and pop corporation. Another uh, uh, canny thing that he said to me in a whole different context, different situation. He he said when he he was then in this episode he was assistant to the chairman, which is a job when he retired that I took on in addition right. to the PR job. But he said, when people ask me what I do, uh, he said, what I do, I'm paid, I'm paid to think about things the chairman of the board doesn't have time to think about, meaning that the CEO is pulled and tugged here and there, and there, there are so many balls in the air and their potential uh, problems down the road. And, and what he was saying is that, that I have the luxury of seeing the world through the lenses of a CEO, uh, my boss, but I have the luxury of being able to think ahead uh, about uh, things that he needs to be aware of. And I'm not talking about crises, but mm -hmm. just things that he needs to be aware of, and and plan for, and we plan for it together. And uh, I thought that was a a pretty good way to 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 put it. So if if you're uh, you don't need to have a separate job, assistant chairman of the board. I'm not arguing for that, but if if that's in the chief public relations officer's portfolio, then it should be. Uh, don't let it get crowded out, you know, and I think that's part of what happens, or has happened. And also, uh, the, the CEO's job changed, and, um, and I'm happy to say now that it, I'm encouraged that it's sort of changing back again with some of the new breed CEOs, but what also happened along the way was that too many cases the CEO became the chief salesman to Wall Street. Yes. Every 90 days. <laughs> yeah. And uh, trying to meet the quarterly. Yes, yeah. And so the CEOs also 
got off the rails right. in many in many cases. And uh, but as I said, I, I'm I'm somewhat encouraged. Some of the new ones that have come in on the scene, some in the wake of scandals and some not, uh, seem to be a, a a different breed. That they're 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 running the business, and therefore they they are open to. Um, to the kind of PR person that we've been talking about here, to help help provide the council to run the business. I mean, right. these uh, there were there were two. I, I probably should, here shouldn't get into books, but but uh, there was about three years ago there was a wonderful book called Execution, <laughs> uh, the written by the CEO of uh, I guess it's. Allied, what used to be Allied Corporation, mm -hmm. is it Allied Bendix, is it, or something like that? And uh, and he uh, he straightened that company out one time, and then he retired, and it went off the rails, and they brought him back. And this book was the the, the piece about that. And he said, uh, he said when I came back, he said. Everybody was rushing around, going to conferences and meetings, and there were these big charts up on the walls and all these new opportunities. And he said, "I looked at that and said, stop it. You know, we we have a business plan. Yeah. Execute it. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and we'll change it when we need to." But and uh, so what I see in some of the new ones, I'm thinking about the new CEO of Hewlett Packard yeah. uh, and and others. That uh, are, are picking up on on the fact that that uh, when you get too big in the head, when your when your salary is or your compensation is what most people know about the company, uh, you're headed for trouble. Yeah. And what you need are executives with a longer term view, and executives who who. Uh, who know where they want to take the business, and it's not down to Wall Street, you know. Right. And there's another aspect that we haven't touched on, and that is the personal relationship between a CEO and someone who is aspiring to be a counselor. And uh, my advice on that would be, if um, if you sense that the CEO doesn't really like you like you, um, or if you always seem to be on divergent path, it's time to look for another job. Ed, um, I... By the way, uh, just a footnote on that. It, the counselor, one uh, a piece of a, a good counselor's character, you have it, I think I had it, is humility. I mean, understand my job is different from the CEO's job. Well, I always knew who was CEO, yeah. but I get low marks on humility, I'm afraid. 